everyone. My name is Amber. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Amber Reads Romance. Today I'm just doing a quick introduction on a my reading vlog that I wanted to do for hockey romances. I love a good hockey romance um, and I wanted to dive into some more new books because um, I, I haven't really read a lot of hockey romances lately. Um, so I thought this would be a good opportunity. There are a few reasons that I wanted to do the vlog, and the main one was that, but also Elsie Silver just came out with Powerless, and um, the main hero, the hero in that book, he is an NHL hockey star, so I thought that'd be a great opportunity so that I can like actually vlog this experience, but also talk about Elsie's new book. Um, and the other big reason was a book that I've seen go the rounds on BookTube, and the First person I saw talk about it really gushed about it, and that's Caitlin from The Love Librarian. She raved about how good this book was, so I really want to read Mile High, and I'm really interested to see how this book is. It looked amazing. It's getting amazing reviews. And I've also heard really good things about the second book, so I'm very interested. This is a new-to-me author. I've never read anything of hers before, so I will be very interested in that. And then I'm also going to read the second book in a hockey series by Helena Hunting. And it's not the Puck series. I can't remember what it's called. It's like the other one. But um, the first book was A Lie for a Lie. And I'm going to read A Favor for a Favor. So those will probably be my three that I'm going to do for this vlog. Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> if I'm doing all three or more. But that's where we stand right now. Um, I believe a life, no, I'm sorry, not a life for life. I believe a favor for a favor is also available for re read and listen free if you have Kindle Unlimited. So I figured I could listen to that um, while I'm at work this week to get in another uh, hockey romance. So um, I'm really excited and nervous to read Powerless because Heartless was my favorite book of 2022. And I don't know if it's going to hold up to it. I do have issues with friends to lovers a lot of the time. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I do trust Elsie Silver because although I've only read a couple of her books, they were like, just blew me away. So, and I do keep meaning to go back into her backlist too to read more of her books. So I'm going to start with Powerless. I will check in with you in a bit and I'll see you soon. Hey everyone, um, just wanted to come out to my car real quick to film an update. Um, my son is actually playing his PS5 in the house right now, so it can get a little loud. Um, but basically, I started reading Powerless, and it's okay. Um, it's not really hitting me the same way that Heartless did right off the bat. Um, we have Sloane, who is like this ballerina, and she's a cousin to the family, to Kate and all of them. And she basically has been in love with Jasper, who was actually adopted by them and taken in because he had some traumatic stuff in his childhood. And he was kind of, I think, living on his own. We don't know the full story yet. And so they take him in and adopt him. And ever since she was 11, like the first time she saw him, she was like in love with him. So, um, you know, basically like we have her pining forever. He kind of turned her down um, when she asked him to prom because she was like 17 and he was quite a few years older than her. So it was kind of inappropriate. And so she kind of took that as like never having a chance with him. And then I think like, but current day, you can tell he's been pining for her too now. Um, but now she's getting married and it's to a total douchebag. Um, this is where some of my problems come in is it's like, they really like Elsie really like made it like a black and white kind of villain, no gray area. It's just the stereotypical asshole boyfriend that treats his woman like shit. And I didn't, I just thought she would do something a little bit more nuanced. Um, but it's okay. That's just one part of it. Um, but basically, um, she, he sees how he treats her at this like rehearsal dinner and, um, ends up going to the wedding and she gets cold feet and stuff happens and she runs away. Jasper helps her run away. And the best part of that whole scene was Willa and Cade. Willa was the one that did like the distraction to, so, so she could run away. And then now she's going to end up be going on like a road trip with him. Um, f like he's not going to be playing his hockey for a few weeks for reasons. Um, don't want to give away this other plot point. But um, it's okay. Um, again, and uh, Friends to Lovers is hard for me. It takes a lot for me to like love it, love it. 
Um, but I do want to give this a fair chance. So far, it's okay. We'll see how I feel. Um, I'll try to check in maybe when I get to like the 50% mark and give you guys a better update. Okay, see you in a bit. Hey everyone, uh, just checking in. I am about 50% uh, into Powerless and I'm enjoying it. I gotta say, um, I actually really do believe in their connection as being like true friends to lovers. Um, it's just slow going for me. It is a slow burn, which I do appreciate slow burns, but there's not a lot of their plot going on. They are just literally on a road trip and stuck in forced proximity and dealing with things and talking and kind of being around each other in a more intimate way. And so it's, you know, that build up. I mean, nothing has happened except for like a kiss finally. Um, and they have an interesting um, experience in the bathroom. I mean, they don't do anything together, but she watches him do something and it's pretty hot. And I'm already seeing that he likes to do praise. And I'm here for the praise. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to what he's going to bring in the bedroom. I'm feeling a control freak and dominant kind of guy in the bedroom. So that should be interesting. But it is a little bit slow. Um, not a lot of plot going on. But I'm not minding it. Like I'm still really enjoying it. I really believe their connection. And believe that they have been pining for each other for years so i'm enjoying the experience elsie is just such a good writer like it's so easy to get read her books they're easy to read through them really pretty fast and you know you really connect to her characters i love the text messages between willa and um sloan and stuff because willa is she's my girl and she's freaking hilarious. Like, they did facials, and she said, oh, we just... She's like, have you binged him yet? She's like, oh, we just did facials. She goes, oh, yeah, Cade loves to give me facials. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Willa. She's freaking hoot, man. I love her. But um, going to continue reading tonight, I think, for a little bit. And then probably um, have to finish it up tomorrow. I have to get up early for work in the morning. So I will check in tomorrow and let you know my thoughts. Hey everybody, just checking in. I did finish Powerless and I want to give you my final thoughts on that book. I did enjoy it, um, but I did only give it four stars. It wasn't a full five-star read to me. And um, mostly it's because of the friends to lovers. I'm kind of in the minority in friends to lovers love. Um, I'm pretty picky. I want it a specific way. And the biggest thing to me is I want to see them fall in love. So I don't want to see them 10, 15 years down the road and be told how they've been in love for like the last 20 years or pining for each other or what. And then like put in some random flashbacks. It just doesn't work the same to me. If it's friends to lovers, like childhood friends to lovers, I want to see them as kids, um, see them maybe in high school, college, and like them falling and dealing with that angst. I want that. And I am an angst hoe sometimes. I do want a little bit more angst in my books. And this really didn't have any outside plot going. It was really like a road trip and them being alone together and kind of coming to terms with their feelings. And so there wasn't a lot going on plot wise. Now that can be really good. I do like it when you have slice of life in a book so you can see them doing regular normal day to day things. Um, but this was that was all this was was them on the road trip and then coming home and kind of dealing with her father. She did stand up to her father and everything, but um, I don't know. I did feel their connection. I felt that they were soulmates. I do think that they were in love. Um, and the sex scenes were good, but near the end, I was kind of skimming them. So when I'm skimming sex scenes, I'm not in, I'm obviously not into it. And that's like a big warning to me. So I did enjoy this, but the best parts in this book were honestly Harvey, um, the father and Willa and Kate. And that's the other big part of this that it just, it followed Heartless. Heartless is a six star book to me. It was my favorite book of 2022. So that's a really hard act to follow. And it just didn't have that same feel to me. Like so much of this book, just the little snippets into Willa and Cade were like my happy place. 
So I just didn't feel that same connection to this couple as I did Will and Cade. Um, Cade's one of my top book boyfriends. Will is a badass bitch. So here I am talking about Heartless more than, <laughs> more than I am Powerless. But I did really enjoy it. Um, it was just a little slow for me. And, um, but I would recommend it. If you love a friends to lovers, I think you will love this. Um, that's kind of a me thing. You know, I'm too picky about friends to lovers and it really takes a lot for me to like love a friends to lovers book. So, um, four stars and I would definitely recommend for you friends to lovers, uh, lovers out there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so then I also started listening to A Favor for a Favor by Helena Hunting. And this is the second book in that series. I can't remember what it's called, the series. Um, but the first book was A Lie for a Lie. And that had RJ and Lainey. And in this book, this is RJ's little sister, uh, Stevie. And she's really uh, feisty. I like her character so far. She actually um, just finished school and was getting a job. And she uh, does like PT. and But she doesn't want to do it off of like her brother's success. And he's on a newer, at the end of the last book, he like um, changed, he went to like a brand new hockey team so that his wife could be closer to her family. And so... This is like a newer hockey team and she goes out to live out there because she's going to get a job with like her boyfriend. Um, and she comes back early from Alaska and finds her boyfriend screwing somebody else. So now she's going to stay at her brother's like condo or place um, because he has a house with his wife. And she shows up to the place and she's kind of a mess. It's the middle of the night. She's had that long flight and all the drama with her ex. Well, now ex. And the neighbor, like, opens up, like, what the hell are you, what's going on out here? And he's, like, a total jerk. And so he thinks that she's his, like, side piece or mistress. So he's totally, like, bad first impression. They, like, so th this starts out, like, a contentious, like, kind of hate to love, like, feisty neighbor situation. He's always just in his boxers, like, coming out in the hallway. So they kind of play a game of, like, she'll dress in her sports bra and, in, like, booty shorts. And so they're kind of, like, messing with each other. So what ends up happening is he gets really badly injured in one of the games. And he's going to be out for, like, I think six weeks or something. And he's, like, devastated because he needs to mesh well with his team. He needs, they're trying to put him in different positions. And he feels like he only has, like, a two-year contract. So he's worried. Um, and then she actually wants to do PT. But they're not giving her the, like, good uh, kind of clients that she needs at her new job. So she, they kind of come to an agreement that she'll help him with his PT. And that way she can get, like, experience with that and have, like, that under her belt. And so that's kind of what's going on right now is he's, uh, she's helping him and they're like, have this attraction to each other. Um, but you know, we'll see where it goes. I will update you probably tomorrow. Um, cause it's like late after work right now. Um, I'm actually out in my car obviously. And we were like actually having hail, which is crazy for San Diego. Um, but I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, just doing another check-in. I guess it's another day in my car check-in. So, um, just wanted to follow up with you guys about A Favor for a Favor. I did finish that at work today. And I really liked this book. It was super sweet, um, cute. I loved Bishop. He was kind of like the hockey player that wasn't like a player and trying to get with a bunch of women. And so I really liked that. Um, I loved their, like, their chemistry was off the charts and like he really wanted to pursue things with um Stevie but he didn't want to like um he was trying to show the team that he was serious about his PT and rehab and everything and they actually approved her to be like his PT person because they did find out of it, about it because of her brother um so they slowly build this relationship um you know, it takes a while for them to actually try and be together. Um, when they are, it kind of goes public and RJ like loses it, um, which I kind of thought was stupid. Like RJ was being so over dramatic. He was literally like a man ho, always screwing like the puck bunnies and stuff. And he was like being way too overprotective of his sister. 
So, and him and, you know, um, Bishop didn't get along. So there was that. Um, I really liked this romance. It was really, really cute. Um, these are really easy, like breezy, cute contemporary reads. So I would definitely recommend this series. Um, it's funny because I read like RJ's son's book way before I ever read these. So I wish I would have read, you know, these, um, books first, but I, I'd be interested to go back and read that book. Um, but I really love Stevie and Bishop. They're very cute together and I'm interested to keep going on the series. Um, I basically gave this one like a four star. I mean, they're not like these, these amazing five star reads. So, um, it's a basic four star cute hockey romance. Um, so I am going to be going into Mile High next. Um, but I am currently reading a book and listening to another book on audio already. So I'm going to have to wait till I finish that. And then I will go into a mile high. So I will check in with you guys in a bit. All right. See you soon. Hey everyone. I just want to do a quick update with you. I did start reading mile high yesterday. I forgot to do an update. So, um, I was reading it late last night. Just wanted to give you my most recent thoughts. I'm not that f too far into the book. I'm only about 20% in, and this is a longer book for a hockey romance, which was kind of surprising to me. It's like about 600 pages, which is not usually the norm with hockey. So I'm hoping there's going to be a lot more to this story because I've heard such great things on booktube about it. Um, so, but so far I am really enjoying it. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to like the hero at the start because he does come off kind of like douchey and man whore. Um, he is a, uh, an NHL hockey star and they're about to go on an away game and they have like their own plane, a private plane. And so they're about to get on and he's getting like DM'd by like multiple girls from that city knowing he's going to be in town and like wanting to hook up. And he, like, literally can't really remember anything about these girls because he's such a player that he has to, like, go to a list he has with, like, info on each girl so he can kind of compare and see which one's worth his time. And I didn't really like that. But I know what we're supposed to kind of have this surface level view of him. So I know there's probably going to be more to him because... He does have, a, seem to have some trauma in his background, like his dad he has no relationship with. And you find out his, like, mom um, had left them for, like, more money kind of situation. And now that he's this huge hockey player, she'll try and show up and try to get involved so she can get money and probably status and all that. And I did really appreciate the look into, like, um, his history. Hopefully we'll learn more. Um, and I did like that he's already brought up going to therapy and he kind of had to do this recovery of like a panic attack that he experienced. So I really love in books when they actually talk about mental health and therapy and how important it is. So I have a feeling that this book is really going to dive into that. And then I actually really loved the heroine in this book, Stevie. She's this beautiful, you know, curvy woman. She's not this size two. Um, but she, she, it's done really well where she's this smart, independent, beautiful woman, but she does have insecurities. So the body shaming is a thing in this book from like other people, like her mom, her so-called friends that she had from like her hometown that you get to see her when they, they fly there. Um, they totally like just treat her like crap, use her because she, her brother, her twin brother is actually a pro NBA player. So like people just used her to get to her brother in the past. Um, but so I like how she's proud of who she is and proud of her body and, but she still doesn't have insecurities and doubts that creep in. And I can really relate to that. I mean, I don't have a perfect body. I'm curvier. I'm a little thicker, I think. And so, I mean, I like that representation, but not being like so proud of it and so in your face, like I am who I am, but not too much of the body hating and hating yourself kind of thing. Because that's, you don't want to read that. You don't want to read a woman that's just down on herself the entire book. So I do really like her. She is feisty because Xanders comes into this plane acting like a diva and she kind of puts him in his place. He just assumes she wants his autograph and she's like, I don't care about your autograph. Like I'm trying to give you the flight, you know, safety info. So I really like their dynamic. They're back and forth. 
Um, you know, he's really attracted to her, but he's also this player and he like hooks up with girls in different cities. So I've liked their dynamic. They keep running into each other and he keeps doing this thing like you following me, you know, and I thought that that was really funny and cute. And they kind of, he'll kind of keep saying it every time they run into each other, but she's not allowed to fraternize with the team. And so like, she's very worried about getting in trouble. He finally kind of, like, puts the moves on her and, like, wants to hook up to get out of a system. And she turns him down because she doesn't want to lose her job. And she was with an athlete in the past, and it didn't work out well. So she doesn't want to be with an athlete again. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I really like these characters. I love Stevie. I love her whole character is so relatable and I think that she's a beautiful woman. So I will check in with you in a little bit once I've gotten further into the story. Um, sorry for rambling yet again in a vlog, but um, I do really, really like these characters so far. And there is a lot more to Xander's than like that meets the eye because his PR, like his agent and stuff, wants him to play at being the bad boy of hockey. So he kind of plays up being the player or having different women every night. Sometimes he doesn't even have sex with them. He just walks them out of the stadium to get pictures. And then, like, he'll go home. His best friend and him have this amazing relationship. He's the captain of the team. And he's, like, the good old boy with a family and a wife and kids. And and then so they kind of play up their rivalry they had when they were in college. And then they became best friends. And so his friend's the good old boy. And he's, like, the bad boy of hockey. So he feels like he needs to keep up this persona to make the money. And he wants to get re-signed. So I found that really interesting too. I love his relationship with his friend and then his friend's daughter and stuff. And so it's very, very cute. So there is more to him than meets the eye. And I'm interested to see how these uh, characters start interacting here. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Hey everyone, just wanted to do a follow up on Mile High. Um, I'm actually really loving this book. Um, it is pretty thick for a hockey romance. But um, so far, it feels needed. Um, there's been a really lot of great character development for Xander's. There's so much more depth to him than, like, meets the eye. And he's becoming, like, one of my top, like, guys that I've read. A broke boyfriend kind of guys. Um, doesn't really start out that way because he is kind of a man-ho. But it's just from his trauma of having his mom abandon him and being kind of like scared to put himself out there and have people like not love him. So I do really appreciate his character. Stevie is such a beautiful character. Um, she does have a lot of insecurities, which are hard to read, but I think that's like anybody would be like that. Um, if you grow up as like a curvier person, a curvier woman in today's time, um, there's a lot of stigmas or a lot of judgment against different body types. And, you know, we have Instagram models and all this. And then if you have a mother who literally ridicules you and treats you like crap or ex-boyfriend that made you feel like you were never enough. And he basically like used her and would break up with her and then find something better and then come back to her. So I really love her character because she does have these insecurities that are valid. Like it's, it's part of human nature, but she still does love herself and want to like accept her body and accept herself as good enough. So I really love it. These characters are a lot deeper than like I expected. And, um, you know, you feel their connection. They've slowly built this connection that I don't think last, um, check in, it was basically like he tried to proposition her to have a hookup to get out of their systems. And she basically said no. Um, and then what ends up happening is she kind of locks herself up in her room for, you know, the, the, the next, that road trip. Cause she doesn't want to cave, but her vibrator, um, runs out of battery and she didn't bring a charger cause she's never had to use it that much on a trip. And so she's like, F it, you know, plus her ex-boyfriend like texts her and just like assumes she'll be like wanting to get back with him when he comes into town. And so she's like, F it. And she just literally like messages him through, you know, social media. She DMs him and he literally is so cocky. He just like gives her his address. Like, 
no baiting around the bush, just here's where I'm at. So they end up having like this uh, amazing night, like where she just wants to get down to business and he's like, there's no rush. And they like watch a band perform, they dance, it's hot. Um, they have like amazing chemistry together. They have like an amazing s night of sex. Like, it, like, and he doesn't want, like she wants to turn the lights off. He wants to appreciate her body. Like he's so into her. And I really loved it. Um, like there was a little bit of choking and a lot of praise, which if you've watched this channel, a few of my videos, I've probably brought it up quite a few times. Praise is like my favorite thing in a book. Like, oh my God, if a hero praises the female, I am here for it. I love it. And this guy praises our heroine so good. He helps build her confidence and have sexual, like, freedom. And he's just so, like, the praise is, like, making this book already a five-star almost to me. But just from him being praising. You feel their connection. And to watch this guy that never wanted a girlfriend, never wanted to date, like, just fall and become a simp for her is just, like, I love it where a guy falls first. And he is definitely, like, fallen first and wanted her from the get-go. And for him to, like, not even be, like, pursuing any other girls, being abstinent, like, being all about her. And so he basically finally is, like, swaying her to want to date him. Um, but they would still have to keep it secret. I'm loving this book. He is so dreamy. And um, I really love their connection. He, what's amazing about this is he helps build up her confidence where she would literally let people shit on her. She let that boyfriend shit on her. She let her mom shit on her. And, like, she has this video call with her mom and her mom is treating her like crap again about, like, her weight, not being married yet, da da da, da. And he, like, and she fights back for once. And then he, like, literally just shuts the laptop. And he's like, I don't want to hear what she's going to have to say to you if she's not going to talk to you, like, right, then not in my house. And he's like, but it's like, that's the first time she's ever stuck up for herself. So I just love that, like, with him, she's building this new confidence and, like, fighting for herself for a change. And I just really find this so beautiful. So I'm getting the hype for this book. Um, it's it's really beautiful. I think I'm about like 60% in. So like I haven't got, I'm just scared for the third act conflict. Is there going to be a breakup? Is there going to be some big drama? I don't know, but I'm loving it. I love her fr fr like relationship with her brother and how close they are. And I can't wait because I know his book is next. So I can't wait to see his book. Um, I'm hoping it's with him and Indy because she just had a thing with her boyfriend. And she's such a cool character in this book. And, like really authentic and beautiful and treats, you know, Stevie right. So I'd be really interested in that. So sorry, I'm rambling again. But this book is so good. Um... I'm really enjoying it and I hope I can finish it tonight and then give maybe follow up with you tomorrow. I'm not sure. It's getting kind of late. Um, but I will see you guys in a bit and uh, with the conclusion of my thoughts on the end of this book. All right. See you in a bit. Hey everyone, just wanted to get my last follow up in. I did finish Mile High and I did really love this book. It was a five star read for me. I'm really excited uh, to dive into more of Liz Tom Ford's books. Um, this is my first book by her and I absolutely loved it. Um, to me, the biggest thing and the biggest selling point is Stevie in this book. She usually it's the hero that does it for me and I do love Xander's a lot. But Stevie's journey and growth in this book is really beautiful. And it's something that I can really relate to how she feels as like a curvier woman, a bigger woman, like not a size two or a size eight. And it was very realistic and authentic. Like the views that she had, the way she would feel about herself. But it also didn't make it like a super depressing book because she did want to have more confidence. She did want to love herself and she was trying to do that. Um, but it's really hard when you have people like your own mother 
or, you know, your ex-boyfriend or just the way other people will view you and talk down to you and make passive aggressive statements about your weight. And so I really loved her character and how hard she worked at, you know, loving herself. And we don't want a man to be the cure-all, but Xanders comes in and he completely helps build her self-confidence. He has a lot of praise. He's always praising her. He worships the ground she walks on. And so through their relationship, she starts to have more confidence, um, appreciate who she is. She finally sticks up to like for herself against her mother and like her that douche ex-boyfriend. So I really love that part of their dynamic and their relationship. Um, it was very beautiful. Um, there was a third act conflict, which I not wasn't completely mad at um, because it was kind of needed for Xanders to kind of work through his demons and his issues. Um, so he definitely needed it ne needed to happen for him to grow. And I really loved it. Um, this is just so beautiful. Like they really loved each other. I felt their connection. The sex was hot. Um, the only thing that I would say is that I wish there was a little bit more with his therapist or his psychiatrist, whichever in the book, because he brings up how he was in therapy for years. Like that's his foundation is about that. But yet he wasn't really working with this therapist. Like most of this book, even when he's working through his issues with his father, his mother, and then near the end, everything that was going on with Stevie, I would have liked, you know, a, a couple scenes, a, a scene of him working through that with his therapist. So um, that was, it's not a big critique or anything, just a little thing. Um, I absolutely love this couple. I can't wait to read the next one, which is going to be Stevie's brother and Indy, who was the other like flight attendant, which I really liked. And they seem like total opposites. Her brother is like the opposite of like how Xander's was, where he's just not a playboy. He doesn't date. He doesn't care about it. So it'll be kind of interesting to see the dynamic in this next book. So I would definitely recommend. It was a great book. It had a lot of hockey um, his career was really important to him. And so I did really enjoy this. Um, probably it, it definitely was the best book out of this vlog. Um, five star, almost six star, but it was a great book. So I would definitely pick it up if you haven't already. It's worth the hype. It's a great read. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video and making it to the end. If you did make it to the end, why don't you leave me a purple heart? And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you on the next vlog.